All right. So let's start. So as you know, today is the uh, unveiling of the Tesla Semi. So we are now live in Los Angeles, just a few miles away from the uh, Tesla Design Studio, where Tesla is about to, to do the unveiling uh, a little later tonight. So we're just going to discuss a little bit our expectation at Electric about uh, what we're going to see tonight and how it could uh, change the, uh, the freight uh, transport industry uh, altogether. Right. So, so there's also some, uh, some other things that could happen at the event tonight. And uh, we're, we're going to talk about a little bit of the speculation um, of other things that may happen, like Model 3 news, maybe a pickup truck, maybe some other stuff, maybe some announcements uh, from magazines. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, so the of course the obvious one is is the Tesla Semi. There's a lot of unknown about uh, what else could uh, if if even if there's a, a one more thing to be announced at the event tonight. But um, as for the truck itself, uh, we already have seen the prototype. Uh, we posted a lot of pictures about that on on Electric. We'll see the test mule actually, uh, which is uh, not the, the the body of the truck is not Tesla's but the inside or the powertrain, the electric powertrain. So we have seen that in action. But we have seen the prototype with the full body of the of the truck before. So there's not gonna be a big surprise there. But uh, I'm sure Tesla's gonna have some some design features to to impress uh, a lot of people with the prototype. But uh, we're more focused about the economics. If you read our, our my original post about the expectation for the truck um it's going to be all about the economics. I mean, I'm sure that during the unveiling itself, they're going to they're going to focus on the design stuff to just the the, the, the cool factor that uh, going to be in the design. But uh, I, I think that ultimately, if if they want to sell this truck, they're going to have to uh, to sell it to fleet operators, and fleet operators can can buy a truck just by looking at a spreadsheet basically and seeing the cost of operation versus the um, uh, the, the the cost of uh, of the purchase of buying yeah, a truck. Yeah, the upfront cost of a in the trucking industry is almost mm -hmm. nothing compared to the uh, the fuel cost mm -hmm. and and also the labor cost. Which you know, if if Tesla's truck doesn't come out in the next couple of years, in, in maybe like five mm -hmm. years, theoretically, uh, you're not even talking about the ne the need for a, a driver or a full time driver. Yeah, that's also the big unknown. So Tesla released uh, uh, yesterday the first little rendering with a video of the um, of the truck. And a lot, of people, a lot of people, excuse me, a lot of people right now are, are, are speculating about uh, the um, uh, the review mirror, which is are actually not uh, not there. <laughs> uh, we already saw that in the original uh, teaser that they released, but now you have instead just a, a, a little contraption that's uh, getting on where there should be side review mirror. And it looks like it could be a camera, so uh, to replace the review mirror, and that could be also be part of a, a of an autopilot hardware suit adapted to the. Uh, the, the semi truck leveraging what Tesla already developed for the um, the autopilot program that we know today in the Model S X and the Model Three now. Yeah, and we've also seen that um, rear view mirror camera in the uh, prototype Model X. So we know that yeah. Tesla's already thinking about this, and and I believe there was some gov government uh, intervention that uh, prevented that failed. Them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so that those camera actually predates autopilot itself. Tesla was thinking about that before ever introducing a, an autopilot program. So there, that might have nothing to do with uh, with it itself. But um, just make sure, that, are we on the feed right now, like in the, the, the comments, or do we, are people uh, commenting? Can we? Or? Yep. Uh, we're seeing some uh, comments here. Let's see. Can you guys hear us right? Or are we, uh, we have our, our little mics right now that we just bought a fry, <laughs> make sure that the, you, you can hear us. Oh, could you reintroduce yourselves, please? Sure. Oh, do we, I don't think we even did. <laughs> so I'm Seth Weintraub, I'm the publisher, and uh, you probably know Fred, Fred Lambert. Fred Lambert, it's the in chief of Electric. Uh, yeah, the merch, Electric merch. Yeah, we're we're sporting right now our nice uh, Electric uh, hoodies. Uh, maybe that's gonna be in the future. Right now, it's just something that we we give out to some fans and uh, uh, people who like the who like the website. Uh, but uh, in the future, yeah, maybe it's something that we consider. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun. It's gl I'm glad to see a lot of people are interested in it. It's uh, it's flattering. Yeah. So uh, to continue on the on the actual uh, Tesla Semi unveiling event, um, coming back to the economics, like I said, I think the the event tonight is gonna the presentation itself, since 
it's going to be the usual Tesla fan that, that watch it and uh, it's going to be pretty focused on the tech and all. We all we all love that. But uh, to sell the truck, it's going to come back to the economics. And like I shared in my, in my um, uh, electric uh, expectation for the Tesla Semi, uh, we, uh, we expect for sure that the truck is going to be expensive. So the, the average uh, diesel truck today, the, the Class 8, uh, sells for about $120,000, uh, which is actually something that uh, it's already expensive. That's a really expensive price because just a few years ago, you could get away with a, easily get away with a $100,000 $100, truck. Not the case anymore. Uh, but even that's going to be dwarfed by the price of, uh, of the Tesla Semi, which I expect personally to be around $250,000. Don't know what you think about that, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if I think this is going to be something where uh, they're not they're, they don't they're, they don't want people to get the sticker shock, so they're going to probably say this is the price of the truck and this is the the rental price of the battery or the uh, you know this is the yearly cost of the truck and and you're you're actually leasing the truck because mm -hmm. I mean you know everybody's going to be able to figure out doing some math how much the actual truck costs, but I I think that fleet operators and especially uh, the people who are buying these huge trucks. Um, are thinking more long term. So, you know, to, 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 to the typical Tesla fans like you and me, we want to know how much it costs, how much, you know, how big the battery is, those kind of specs. I think, uh, you know, I, I don't think Tesla is going to play to that market. So that was a question like uh, that plays into what uh, what you just said. So what do you guys think about the battery strap that's just charging the truck? Yeah, so, we've been talking about this a lot. Actually. Yeah, so that plays right into what you just said. Uh, if Tesla is going with a, a, a battery rental program, which I think is a big if, um, the, there's, there's going to be a, a need for a battery swap or infrastructure, uh, which is a, a big investment, uh, which is something I think is, that, that, that's the big question here. You talk about a, a sticker price shock with that, but I think that actually the, this sticker price shock is easier to sell then uh, to work with a, a battery swap or, or infrastructure. Uh, if you tell a fleet operator that you're not gonna own the battery, that's gonna, you're gonna have to change it. I think, I think it, even though uh, it might make more sense economically, I think it's gonna be a hard thing to sell, which, is, which bring us to the second part of the question, which is against uh, the, uh, um, the charging capacity. So if you don't have a battery swap, you have to. You, you, there's a need for a very high charge rate, which I think plays into the next question that we just got from uh, uh, Matt Obadia, if I pronounce that right. Uh, what do you think the bonus thing is going to be? Supercharger V3 next general service. Uh, the supercharging V3 is a good guess in my opinion. So uh, I think if if Tesla doesn't announce a battery swap program, they're going to announce a, a new generation of supercharger, maybe a new name too since uh, a lot of people are talking about ultra fast charger now uh, uh, maybe a, a step over what's the step over i don't know <laughs> i think i think uh, hypercharger right hypercharger mega charger i don't know but um that's a real possibility so i tweeted the, the, the first time elon mentioned that supercharger v3 so the third version there's already been two different versions of the original supercharger uh, the third version which he, he referred to supercharger v3 when he first met, mentioned it on Twitter, so I asked him like, what could be a possible charge rate for it, and I referenced the uh, the ultra fast charger that uh, some automaker are talking about right now. A child's toy. A child's <laughs> toy was was his response. Uh, so if there is indeed a new supercharger being announced today, we can expect some insane, uh, ludicrous charge rate. So five hundred kilowatt. Does that sound good? Could be more. Could I be. A, I, I don't know. I know. I know. BYD buses and, and a bunch of other like heavy duty electric. Yeah, it's not already or yeah, in it's that not, range. It's not unprecedented. It's, it's possible. So that it could be part of uh, of what's announced today, but it, and that leads us to 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 the range, the possible range. So there's been a lot of mention about the range. So how much distance you can travel in, in, in within a charge before you get to that super fast. Uh, uh, charging rate and uh, some information that leaked but were uh, suspicious at best suggested that it was about 200 to 300 uh, miles on a single charge so that would cover just a uh, regional short-range trucking which is not a bad market to be in by the way so it's not it's not like 
uh, a lot of people are, are, are saying that if Tesla doesn't release a 500, 600 mile truck, they, they're not going to be uh, a market for it. And that's absolutely not true. There's, there's going to be a market for it if, if that's the case. Um, but but that, that opens up, up some questions that brings us back to the battery swap issue. Could it mm -hmm. could could that mean because in, in the past, uh, Elon Musk said, you know, the, the battery swap doesn't work for anything except maybe fleet a applications. Yeah, that's a good point. So maybe this is the fleet application he's talking about. Um, in addition, um, you know, the 300 mile range, uh, maybe if, if the chargers are quite fast, maybe, you know, every 300, 200, 300 miles, there's a, you know, what are we calling them? Hyperchargers now? Mm -hmm. uh, and it charges the, the truck in, in 30 minutes and maybe that's fine for everybody. Yeah, that's a, that's a possibility. Um, and then they could put a battery pack in the trailer as well. Yeah, that also plays into the whole thing. So there's a, a lot of big if right now, but if uh, if they do that, if they do a battery swap, if they do um, uh, battery in the trailers and, and things like that, then it, that, that closes the market a little bit. Because a, a freight company, which has a lot of customers and they are, are getting different rate all the time and trying to compete on, on, new, uh, on new routes and, and, and specific jobs, uh, they, they want a, a very versatile vehicle that can do uh, a lot of things. Uh, so if Tesla limits the possibilities with, with this truck, with the Tesla Semi, uh, through a shorter range, through um, uh, infrastructure for charging or battery swap, through having part of the batteries within the trailer, that's a lot of limited factors. But uh, what they can do with that is, uh, is they can instead um, target uh, captive fleet so instead of going with freight companies, they go with the large companies that operate their own fleets, and those trucks have regular routes that uh, uh, are uh, the, that are between their, their distribution centers, their stores. So we're talking about companies like Walmart, like Amazon, like uh, Home Depots, uh, name it. UPS. U UPS is a good example. So th those companies know where their trucks are going all the time uh, beforehand. So, but even then. Uh, some companies, if Tesla really it's an incredible cost of operation per mile, uh, I think fleet operators are going to find ways to, to, to take advantage of that. So they, they, they're going uh, they, to they're gonna find ways to utilize the, the advantage of the vehicle, which is the cost per mile, even if it's a shorter range, even if it's a, a restricted by some kind of a battery infrastructure. Yeah, so in, in addition, so we, we, we've heard some rumors about the specs of the, the actual vehicle and how, how fast it can go compared mm -hmm. to a, uh, um, a typical semi that's sold today. Um, I think it takes like a minute to go zero to 60. Yeah. Like with, with a load, you know, a typical load. Uh, with or without a load, so I'm not sure exactly, because I, I think it can be done up to two minutes with a load, depending on the truck. Right, so a minute to two minutes, depending mm -hmm. on the load. Yeah, so we think it's going to be a, a, a lot shorter than that, obviously. Yeah, so uh, electric motors are known for, for the incredible torque, and uh, uh, they can achieve a, a, a quick acceleration from, from a standpoint. But uh, from a standstill. So, yeah, we think it's something uh, under 20 seconds is really achievable. doesn't mean much, uh, tw 20 seconds, for, for most people, especially for the Tesla fans, which are, we are used to the, the, the Model S that can do 2.5 now, and then Model 3 can do 3 seconds and stuff like that. But something like 18 seconds would be uh, quite impressive. A game for, changer for the trucking yeah. industry. We're talking about uh, something that's going to at least wait uh, 13, 14,000 uh, ton, uh, 14, ton, 14, pounds. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, that's the very minimum that they can they can achieve. Most trucks today are 16, 17 thousand pounds. So moving something that big that quick is uh, is impressive. Uh, no matter how you look at it. And we saw that video of it accelerating, didn't we? Yeah, we saw the test mule accelerating. Test so, mule, so and that seemed kind of quick. For it seemed kind of quick. Some some people I, I saw in the, the comments on, on an article about it on electric tried to. To uh, gauge the uh, the actual speed based on the video and the the approximate distance that, that it moved and it, uh, it it's all it's difficult to, to, to calculate exactly but it was definitely uh, quicker than a, than a diesel truck of right. that size. So now coming down to the the actual something that we referenced a few times uh, already but to, well, we didn't get into which is the most important part about that that's going to be the most important number that uh, Elon was going to talk about tonight. It's, it's the uh, cost of operation per mile. Uh, before uh, I can think for a, a driver, because that was a big if that we, we um, discussed already, uh, whether or not uh, it's going to be self-driving now or at one point in the future. I mean, I think it 
it's definitely going to be at some point. In yeah, the future, yeah, at some point in the future. It's gonna, unless unless they say that the truck is going to be on the road like a year or two years from right, now, right? And at that or, point, it's going to get tricky. But uh, we we think they they're going to try to bring at least like low volume uh, in the hands of customer as soon as possible, and those are likely not going to be uh, fully autonomous. And Elon Musk also talked about the comfort of the drivers and stuff like that. So they, there's definitely an aspect about, excuse me, having someone behind the wheel of that Yeah, truck. and there's like a cab, you know, you see the window. And the yeah, yeah. So. And also in the trucking industry in general, the driving is one part of the, of the job of the truck driver. There's also a lot of logistic around, the, uh, around that that needs to be handled right now. It's not cannot be easily uh, automated at this point. But um, so we're talking about $1.00. Per one dollar per mile for uh, an average diesel truck before accounting for the cost of a, a driver. That's the the cost of a fleet operator of someone that, that's operating a, a fleet truck. Um, right now, what we are estimating based on savings from uh, efficiency, so uh, using electricity instead of um, of diesel, and uh, possible uh, other efficiency improvement like um, with the weight. So a lot of people think that because of uh, uh, 400 kilowatt hours, 500, the 600 even kilowatt hour uh, battery pack, that the truck is going to be automatically uh, heavier. But I, I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a possibility that uh, Tesla uh, made some efficiency improvement there. We think it's going to end up between 40 cents and 60 cents uh, per mile, which would be roughly half of what's of the cost right now. So I don't know what that's thing. a huge deal. Yeah. I mean, that that's you know, if you go out a couple of years, that becomes way way bigger cost than the the initial startup price of the um, of the vehicle. And uh, you know, it this is the kind of disruption that will change the industry if you know if it's this this uh, this big a change. So you know, the, these companies that do buy uh, these electric vehicles electric trucks are going to be at such an advantage over the the companies that don't that mm -hmm. the companies that don't are, are are they're basically going to go away or they're not they're not going to be able to do business yeah so that's that's the kind of disruption we tend to think about tesla creating so that's kind of like you know what we're expecting to see tonight mm -hmm. yeah it, it could be sometimes the word disrupting is overused but uh, uh, if you uh, Cut the cost of operation of truck by half. It's definitely uh, the disrupting is that is the right word, um, but uh, of course there's a lot of a, a big if here. But uh, uh, like I wrote in an article, I I think uh, Elon Musk has been putting high expectation on uh, um, has been has done has done nothing to manage expectation for 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 this uh, this something that's for sure. So if they achieve a forty cents per, per mile. Uh, we, we would be in line with uh, those uh, insane expectations that he's been promoting. But uh, I think at 50 cents, 60 cents would be also <clears throat> also very imp impressive. <clears throat> Sorry. So are we still, uh, so have we covered everything about the truck? If there's anything about the well, truck? Well, I, I see Matt uh, asking another, another question. Can you remind us of the other plans that they spend the Fremont factory? Sorry, I'm losing my voice right now. <clears throat> Is there going to be space to build uh, the trucks in Fremont. That's a very good question. Uh, we visited Fremont earlier this, this summer, Seth, Seth and I, and uh, uh, the focus right now in Fremont is really on the Model 3. So, uh, and uh, they, they, they are right now, they, I don't think even Tesla maybe knows exactly what what they can and what they can do at uh, Fremont because uh, they, um, they are still uh, evaluating their current Model 3 production line see how, how efficient that is real that that really is mm -hmm. and uh, they want to replicate rep replicate it in order to increase their uh, production volume next year's too because right now they are they aim to be set up at around 5,000 units and they need to take that to 10,000 units next uh, next year and they like Elon Musk said on during the last conference call for the uh, uh, Q3 financial result they don't know exactly how they're gonna set up that, that other line to, to support that because they need to uh, uh, understand better that they're the first line and uh, so if there's a lot of uh, improvement that can be made on the new line then maybe they're going to have room to to to, to squeeze the, the truck in somewhere because that's going to be a, a lower volume vehicle for sure but it's the body line and stuff like that's going to be a, a monster really so right. 
I mean, they, they could outsource a lot of that. I, I would imagine that the battery yeah. packs were going to be made in, at the Gigafactory. At the Gigafactory, that's okay. true. Um, so, and we've also heard anecdotally, I don't know if you were part of this conversation, but someone had told us that there's parts of the Numi factory that are basically untouched from the Toyota GM days. And, yeah. and there's still, like, you know, assembly lines there and just old, old parts just stacked mm-hmm. up. So I think there's room. I... I don't know if there's room in Tesla's like bandwidth. Like I, I would kind of say, hey, focus on getting this Model Three out. You know, yeah. that that would be my like advice. But like this is you know an Elon Musk like seventeen things going on at the same time. Technically. Well, the the argument is that the, the the Tesla semi needs to get to market as soon as possible because it's a an important segment to electrify for sure. There's a lot of emission coming from freight transport. Uh, it's uh, it's not a, a trivial thing to do. It's going to be difficult, but it's a very important thing to do to arguably to the same level as the Model Three. So uh, it, it's uh, it's can be frustrating to uh, to Model Three reservation holder thinking that uh, maybe there should be should be more effort on the on the Model Three, but um, I'm not so quick to go there. <clears throat> yeah. So maybe we should uh, go into you know other possibilities. Mm-hmm. I know one thing we were thinking about, um, or it's been speculated a lot that Tesla was going to, you know, show some other type of vehicle. Um, you know, there's the, the rumors of the Model Y, um, which is supposed to. It was originally not going to be based on the Model Three, but now is going to be based on the Model Three mm-hmm. because Elon Musk said his uh, executives Convinced talked him out of it. Yeah, which. Which seems like it's at the theoretical stage yeah. at that point. But anyway, uh, so the model, model... Well, uh, the, the, if they show something, it's going to, it's going to be a prototype. Uh, right. So, and uh, we uh, there's been a lot of evidence that there's already uh, our prototypes of Model Y out there, or at least at the design studio, which was where the, the event's going to be. So that's not impossible. And if they are to unveil a new vehicle, at the mm-hmm. uh, aside from the Tesla Semi, uh, it kind of has to be the, the Model Y since uh, technically it's the next one to be released. Uh, they said that after the Model 3, the fuck is going to be on Model Y. So a lot of people also said like the, the, the Tesla pickup truck maybe, a Tesla right. van based on the Model X that was maybe, also mentioned. Maybe they'll make the uh, Tesla El Camino a Model 3 <laughs> with a, a flatbed on the back. Yeah. And uh, Or even the, like uh, Matt uh, mentioned, the uh, the Roadster, since the, the next-gen Roadster showed up in the... Uh, uh, in the, the Tesla referral program out of nowhere, like they are, they are telling us that they, they're going to give you a, a, a huge discount depending on the number of referral you make on the car that wasn't even unveiled yet. And uh, so that's that, that was kind of weird that I got this year when this summer when they, they announced that. And uh, it certainly got us thinking that maybe we're going to see that car sooner than we thought. And yeah, that could be based on the Model 3 platform as well. I mean, also, it's you know, it's the size is right, right. Um, yeah, it's definitely a possibility. Uh, other than that, so I'm a little bit more skeptical about maybe a, a whole new vehicle aside from this semi being unveiled uh, at the event. I'm more about uh, a function, uh, like a, a feature or an accessory or... Right, so the charging. That, like, like the charging, like something that is going to be beneficial to the entire uh, Tesla community. Right. So uh, these mega hyperchargers that charge mm-hmm. the trucks, are they going to be available to the, the, the car or the yeah. Model S and X owners? So that, that'd be the big news if, uh, if someone... I'm not sure that it's going to be the case. Uh, uh, honestly, we, we know that Tesla has been working to improve its uh, battery technology in order to support uh, a higher charge rate without uh, damaging the cells, which is the problem right now in, in achieving high charge rates. Uh, so it's, it's not impossible. But uh, I think the thinking was that we're the, the, the new 2070 cells mm-hmm. were going to be key to the faster charging. Yeah, that so, was the original assumption. Uh, Tesla didn't announce that in, or anything uh, relating to that with the, uh, um, the release of the production version of the Model 3. But uh, it's certainly a possibility. And even, even currently, you know, if you're a Model S or X owner, you know that um, you'll get the full you know, 120 kilowatt or, or whatever speed of the, the charge initially, but that goes down pretty rapidly as you, your battery starts to fill up. So if Tesla's able to do you know even 200 kilowatts, that's gonna almost immediately go down because the cars are already uh, topping, the capping the amount of kilowatts going in. So mm-hmm. in, in my opinion, I don't think that 
Tesla can get a much faster charge on existing cars anytime soon. That's a real possibility. It'd be a real bummer too, but <laughs> that's uh, that's possible. Tesla uh, ride, riding mower would be awesome. Yeah, it would be, but uh, I don't think that's in the plans. And uh, there's actually uh, one company that's doing that. Uh, I, I forget the name right now, but uh, I don't think we made an article about it on Electric, which is... Uh, we were actually trying to get a review unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. We, we contacted the company to get a review unit in order to, to, to get that. But they, they, they are sold at Home Depot. They are uh, full-on ride-on uh, um, lawnmower. It's like Mag Magicita, or I feel like it's a Japanese brand. It's a, yeah, I think it's a Japanese. I think it's a big company that's doing it too. It's not like a, a startup or anything. They, they are they, they were already on Home Depot. It's one of those big companies that do uh, power tools. Okay? Yeah, all electric power tools, and they did uh, one of those. And uh, early reviews, I think, were pretty good. Like, yeah. I think people are enjoying them. You can also do what I do and buy an old gem. Uh, 2002 gem and uh, use that to mow your lawn. Well, to mold, to you could to, to, you to could to mow your lawn. You, yeah. you could. I use it for the other things that people yeah. use mowers for, like dragging crap around your yard and mm -hmm. and picking up tree stumps and that stuff. Mm -hmm. So coming back to the uh, Tesla semi unveiling, uh, what we're hoping for also is also to to, to get inside that truck. It's going to be an impressive truck to um, to see the interior. Sure. Uh, a lot of people right now are so speculating, is it going to be just a day cab or uh, something that you uh, you can sleep in? Uh, uh, that's also not clear from what we've seen from the prototypes. Like It looks like it could be enough to have a, a cab uh, in the back, but uh, I, I wouldn't confirm that, like, don't quote me on that, but uh, it's a possibility. So Tesla also talked about uh, what, what we'll be looking for in terms of production, to go back at the, pr the production of it. Uh, and I must talk about sharing components with the Model 3. So that could facilitate the production of the car, of the car, of the, of the truck. I think that the, the truck is going to have, what, four or six Model 3 engines. Truck in units, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure of the number exactly, but uh, uh, it's going to be uh, possibly uh, at least one per axle, maybe more than one per axle. So yeah, four to six is a real possibility. Um, so, Right now, uh, the Model 3 drive unit is or made in a, uh, at the Giga factory in, in Nevada, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so that that could definitely facilitate the, the production of uh, of the the truck. But uh, uh, to come back to, to to the actual body of the truck, that's uh, that's going to be the uh, probably the bottleneck right now to for the production. Um, Would Tesla outsource the body of the truck production? That's a real possibility too, because because a lot of uh, of truck makers are, are doing that. Um, but the way I see it, I think uh, there's going to be a lot of technology of a lot of improvement made right. at that level too. Uh, like I said, uh, I wouldn't be exactly surprised if Tesla announced like that the truck is uh, is not as heavy as most people would think. Uh, and if they do that, it's going to be a, a a lot of uh, a very ingenious uh, engineering to. Uh, uh, incorporate that um, that electric powertrain within a, a truck form factor. Uh, that would be impressive. Uh, how many is a bunch uh, for the Model 3 motors? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think three is not enough to be a bunch. Uh, four is starting to get there, so at least four motors. Uh, and uh, if it's, um, uh, I wouldn't be exactly surprised if it's six. And six is definitely a bunch. So you found the electric riding lawnmower? Yeah, so it's R Ryobi. <laughs> Ryobi is the, is the name of the company. Yeah, it looks good. And, mm. and if anybody at Ryobi is listening, I want one for my yard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely need one of those pretty quickly. Uh, actually, mm. maybe in the spring. All right, so we've got some more mm. questions here. Yeah, don't hesitate to put your question in the um, uh, YouTube comments. Although I think maybe people have been commenting too on the uh, electric comments, so maybe we could check that out too. So a Tesla trailer with motors and batteries. That, that, uh, we've talked a little bit about how uh, the trailer could have an additional battery. Um, it just makes sense, uh, you know, from a driving uh, standpoint. Um, you know, the, these companies that um, that have these these small fleets that go around um, in, in shorter spurts have their own trailers. You never, you never see a Walmart trailer with a, you know, a, a different type of truck. So it's kind of like a one-piece uh, type of vehicle. So 
yeah, theori- theoretically, a battery pack in the trailer could could help um, the truck. Also, aerodynamics wise, um, you don't want to put one of those old fashioned trailers on a super aerodynamic truck and and kind of pull it back, you know, when it's zooming down the street. Um, so I, I imagine that Tesla is going to have a lot to say about what trailers go behind these these trucks. I mean, maybe the trailers also have some other like like. Uh, Joe Schmo ten twenty four says that, uh, or or somebody else said that um, there could be even motors in the back of the trailer. Maybe. Yeah, uh, I'd be like I said, uh, unless they're really focused on those uh, captive fleet uh, like the WalMarts uh, of, of the world, I'd be very surprised that there's something new with the trailer because uh, it's a it, it's a very low margin uh, product and that uh, is uh, is tossed around a lot and. W- the freight companies will leave a, a, a trailer at the client, they pick up another trailer, something like that. So managing the logistic of that is not impossible, that's for sure, but uh, it's uh, it, it will be very complicated. It's gonna be a tough sell for those fleet operators. But like I said, Walmarts and, and stuff like that are, are, would be a, a prospective uh, customers. And um, we, we already know that uh, Tesla has been uh, showing uh, the prototype or at least a test mule around to potential customers. And uh, so if, if some of those were, were within those customers, some of those Walmarts and Amazon and, and such, uh, th- those company operate a mind-boggling fleet uh, size-wise, I mean, the, the number of trucks that they're operating, uh, they could potentially buy a year's worth of Tesla's production capacity for, for, for the Tesla Semi. So not impossible that, uh, that, that they, start, they start out with that. And maybe the, uh, the, the, the talk about uh, other configuration of the truck that could handle larger distances without uh, a, a, a tricked out uh, trailer with more batteries or possibly motors, like uh, the uh, person commenting said. So it, it, it's definitely a possibility. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised that since Tesla was already showing the, uh, um, the truck around to customers, and uh, if they were confident about the uh, the number that they brought forward, uh, the numbers, I mean, the uh, cost of operation uh, and the uh, the starting price of, of the truck, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla announced that they already sold out uh, a number of truck or uh, even in years of uh, productions. Yeah, and also uh, Cummings, Daimler, who else? Some some other companies have also announced. Volkswagen announced a, a large investment in the, in electric truck. I don't, right. Don't, don't think they, they they already have a prototype that they showed a while back, but it, it, it's not in the in like in the pack that was recently released uh, just before the um the, the right. The, it's, the it's, it seems kind of strange to me that all these companies are trying to get the, the word out that they're they're also working on electric trucks. To me, it seems like. You know, Tesla's probably going around behind the scenes saying, "Hey, would you buy this truck or whatever?" And and the word on the street, you know, these people are buying trucks are like, uh, "You know what? We're going to hold off on our big order of uh, uh, Cummings diesel trucks right now because we've got this other thing that we're thinking yeah. about." And Cummings is like, "Oh, we better maybe we should do something else." So I think that's kind of you know, I'm I'm, I'm probably being optimistic here, but I yeah. think I think there's probably some rumblings in the industry. Um, well, it's something that happened with the Model Three. Uh, like, even years before the launch, people were already planning to buy it. So, uh, by planning to 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 buy the, the car, you you work around the, your the time that you're gonna change your car, which results in possibility losing a sell to an, another um, automaker in the same segment. So that's definitely a possibility. But uh, yeah, normally, so, when so you need a truck, you need you need you need the truck. Yeah, you, you need, need to update your fleet. And uh, so I think that's going to be less of a of a reality for for this segment of the of the industry, but um, I think I think people are really pretty excited. Those that got to see the truck, uh, and um, they, they, they they have they have the numbers and, and stuff like that. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if they already put down the, uh, their name to, to 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 be among the first to get the one of the Tesla Semi. Yeah, and um, so so what else are we going to see at the event? So let's go back to that. Um, one thing that we were kind of speculating about today is that um, right now is right about the time that Motor Trend announces oh. their car of the year. And yeah, so uh, they just announced that Tesla is within the uh, is on the list. The Model Three is on the list, right? Right, right. And we were talking about that um, a little bit earlier, but 
Um, what's interesting is usually they announce mid-November, which is right about now, uh, their car of the year. I, we were kind of wondering if that was one of the reasons why um, Tesla delayed this event because um, you know maybe they had gotten wind that they were going to win the award or they were in the finals and they were like, well, maybe we should wait to uh, see if, if that's the case. I know um, there was a, a secret Tesla event almost exactly five years ago that was the first uh, Tesla event I went to in New York City where um, Tesla Model S won the uh, Motor Trend Award and, and nobody even knew why we were going to this Tesla event in New York City. So um, I think I think that would be kind of a neat surprise uh, a little over five years after the Model S. Um, although is the Motor Trend Car of the Year still a... As the Porsche has used to be. Uh, I, I'm not so sure. Like the, last year was the, the Bolt. Uh, that that one the the motor trend and the uh, the timing is and the, well, the timing is always the same every year but the uh, uh, the situation around the availability of the of the bolt cars are very similar too I mean when the bolt won the award no one had their bolt yet or almost and no one they started production they started deliveries in December with very low volume uh, so uh, a few a few customer had them but uh, not not many. Uh, and right now, the same. There's probably more Model Three or very very similar model number of Model Three on the on the road right now uh, as there were at the time uh, for the Bolt, but uh, no regular customer um, as a Model Three yet, uh, as as we know. Uh, yeah, and month. actually, I think we heard a rumor from Facebook via Reddit about um, the first non-employee getting. Yeah, so that could be another surprise to at the, at the event possible surprise maybe they're going to deliver the first uh, model 3 to regular customers by regular customers i mean non, uh, non employees, uh, employees or, or family investors. members or employees or investors company insiders th those people so that could be a, a possibility and we we uh, uh we saw that, that tesla was uh, uh stocking uh stockpiling model 3s and uh, not so far from uh, uh from the uh uh, the, the event tonight, the the location of the event. Yeah, the so I, I happen to be in the uh, the area of the uh, uh, the Marina del Rey. I think it's going to be the new Marina del Rey delivery center. Delivery center. Yeah. And man, I've never seen so many Teslas. Mm -hmm. But um, there were about twenty. I I think we counted twenty um, Model Threes, and most of them, you know, clearly they're all pr pretty new. Um, a few of them had some. Uh, tape markings that, uh, you know, this had been fixed or this was checked or this was, you know, whatever. So, you know, the fact that they're stockpiling Model 3s here in Los Angeles kind of indicates to me that a wider rollout is is coming. And, and I saw two different um, Model 3s with mid numbers over a thousand. So I don't know if that means they're starting to ramp up in a bigger way or if they're skipping numbers perhaps or... Yeah, they're, they're definitely skipping numbers as we... Uh... As we found out, as when we got, we started tracking the early um, v, uh, VINs that they, they were filing with uh, uh, the federal agency in charge of uh, of that, versus the number of cars that were actually produced and delivered, and so of course they, they, there's a, also discrepancy between the vehicles that are delivered and the vehicles that are uh, produced. But beyond that, even if you compare to the vehicle produced, the VINs just didn't match. So. Uh, uh, in, with higher volumes, it, it, it's, it's going to be a, a, a not so bad of a way to, to track that uh, that progress on the ramp up. But at this time, with only about a thousand uh, uh, VINs spotted, we think it's still too early to, to, to get a, a very good idea of uh, how many vehicles are out there. But uh, you saw at least 23, uh, over 20 uh, Model 3 so, um, uh, that are here in Los Angeles right before the uh, delivery of the uh, not the delivery but the unveiling of the Tesla semi so that could also be a uh, one of the surprise at the at the event yeah. and and we have to wrap up soon mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna try to get in the next five minutes so if you have any last questions get those to us now yeah um, but um, one of the concern people have right now is and and I don't know if any we haven't been watching the news too much today mm -hmm. but is the seventy five hundred dollar uh, dollar tax yeah. credit still happening I know the Republicans. Uh, passed some in the uh, house so the, the house bill which included the uh, uh, repeal of the uh, of the tax credit has passed so uh, there's still uh, I'm not an expert in uh, US politics uh, 
I don't know if you can tell from my accent, if I'm not from here. But uh, I, there's apparently still a chance that he can be blocked with the Senate, I'm not understanding. Theoretically, it could be blocked by the Senate. Um, lots of things can happen. But if it, if it doesn't go through and the $7,500 tax credit does expire, that means only until December 31st, midnight, uh, will a $7,500 tax credit be applied to a Model 3 purchase, which is a, a huge deal. Yeah, um, we're talking about not hundreds, not thousands, we're talking about hun- potentially hundreds of thousands of Model 3 reservation holder that could have gotten the, uh, uh, the, the, the federal tax credit but will not be because of it. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely a huge deal. And it's not like, so Tesla's almost out of, you know, they're going to be out next year anyway yeah. of the 7,500, but it's, it's not like you don't get anything. You still get 3,750 back for, I think, two quarters after that. You get the full uh, uh, 7,500 for the current quarter during which you uh, reach the 200,000 vehicle delivery mark, plus another full quarter of it. So potentially two quarters. Uh, and so the important number is the production rate at the time they hit that mark. So if they are at 5,000 uh, units per, per week at that point, you know, we're talking about a very large number of vehicles that can be delivered during that uh, uh, three to six month period uh, that, uh, that you still get the full credit. And then yes, after that you, you get the half credit and then no credit at all. But uh, uh, yeah, it's a, it, it's a huge deal for U.S. buyers right, right now, and not just for the Model 3, but for any vehicle. I think uh, I think the Bolt is going to take a big hit from, for that because uh, I'm not sure how many people are going to be willing to pay uh, over $30,000 for, uh, uh, for for that vehicle without uh, a rebate on it. So It's a hot hatch. Yeah, it's a, it's a hot hatch, but uh, uh, it, it's, it's a hard sell to, uh, at that price to, to, to get uh, that kind of vehicle. But uh, uh, the Leaf also uh, could get a hit. Though yeah, that's at, that's going to be a bad time for the Leaf because that's yeah. that's a huge chunk of the. I mean, the Leaf is what twenty five thousand. It started twenty nine. Twenty nine and goes down to twenty two. But I mean, that's as, as a percentage of the cost. I think yeah, it's the, bigger. The, the the lower priced EVs are going to suffer a lot more mm-hmm. than you know. Obviously, Tesla, um, the high end pe- you know theoretically people who are buying the Model S and Model X aren't aren't hurting for money and, and can spend a little bit more mm-hmm. um, but you know I think it's going to hurt the whole electric vehicle industry in general and, and maybe you know we'll hear something about that today maybe a little bit of lobbying yeah a public lobbying or something definitely gonna have uh, something that I want to track soon to try to clarify the, the situation but it's uh, it looks kind of dying right now it's not uh, a little bit we're, yeah. not, we're not too optimistic about that um, but uh, to to we need to to leave soon so unless uh, I don't see too many questions right now, a lot of comments, uh, but... Uh, uh, like a flat earth. Yeah. <laughs> Florida community here is creeping in the, our stream right now. Uh, but uh, just to, to, to recap for the event tonight, um, it's gonna, this is going to open the doors uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, local time. Uh, we have a post about that on our track if you, if you want to get the, your local time and everything. Uh, but uh, we're going to start uh, on... Our, we, we're going to have a live blog on, on Lake Trek. That is gonna be uh, fed with uh, our, all our social media posts uh, from uh, from from Seth and myself, and we have also Jamie that's coming from Electric, and uh, a bunch of people's gonna be there. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to to feed you. Um, yeah. So so follow us on YouTube. We're gonna do some live YouTube streaming, and if you're here, just hit that subscribe button, <laughs> and then uh, we're gonna do Instagram. So subscribe to our Instagram, which is electric.co. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to do Twitter, uh, Electric uh, Co. on Twitter, and we're going to do Facebook Live, so uh, mm-hmm. subscribe to us on Facebook, and uh, we're going to do different uh, streams and different uh, uh, bits of mm-hmm. video for each of the platforms. Yeah, we're going to have as many content as we can, as many pictures, as many video, and uh, later on after the event, we're going to have maybe more in-depth posts about uh, what Tesla unveiled uh, tonight, whether it's just the Tesla Semi or more like we just discussed that earlier in the stream so thanks a lot for joining us guys and uh, maybe later on we're gonna have uh, uh, other podcasts of, of the of the sort maybe not just live stream like that but more um, fleshed out podcasts about uh, uh, or, or article on electric and the uh, the uh, renewable energy and um, ev scene in general so uh, let us know what you what you think about that and uh, how we can 
uh, deliver something that uh, you'd like to consume in, in, in that space, which is a, a video content and um, audio content. Cool. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're at the show tonight, think, come see us. Uh, maybe we'll have a couple extra sweatshirts for you. <laughs> and uh, we hope you have a good time.